Hey Sauce and Gravy Nation, welcome back to another great episode. This is Johnny Mac with the Sauce and Gravy channel. Get ready for a rich brown sauce. I'm gonna show you how to make an African sauce. Buckle up, let's go. Let's begin with the prep work, shall we? Quarter six Yukon Golds or whatever potatoes you have on hand. Russets, they work perfectly fine. Let me give you a breakdown of what we're trying to accomplish here. To make this sauce recipe, you need one and a half cups or 375 milliliters of a brown cooking stock. So I'm gonna cook a three pound chuck roast with some potatoes and onions to create that cooking liquid. You could also add other vegetables like carrots and celery, whatever you like. And you want a rich, flavorful cooking liquid or stock to make that sauce just pop. You could also use just a simple old Espanol sauce. I'll put a link in the description box for a recipe below. Roughly chop two onions and then smash that subscribe button if you're not a member of the Sauce and Gravy community just yet. That way you'll have access to a wide variety of sauce making tips and techniques. Pour one tablespoon or 15 milliliters of olive oil into a Dutch oven, then drop in those onions that you diced roughly. The burner, it's over medium to high heat. Saute these onions until they're lightly browned around the edges. So while those onions are doing their thing, it's a good time for you to round up some spices for a rub for that three pound or 1.3 kilo chuck roast. I used a teaspoon of each of these spices, onion powder, garlic powder, ground mustard, ground thyme, some black pepper, and then two teaspoons of salt. And if there's a specific rub that you like out there, use it. If you like the way it tastes, that's really all that matters. And if you don't like chuck roast, you can always use any type of roast that you want, or you could even use a steak. Why not fry up some steaks, make a pan sauce with this African sauce. It really has a powerful concentrated flavor. It's a knockout. Get ready, you're gonna love it. You'll probably start to notice a little browning on the bottom of your pan. That's flavor, you want that, color is good. And after about five to eight minutes, you should see a little light brown around the edges on those onions. That's perfect, add more flavor. You're ready to take them out, put them to the side, get them ready for later. Pour some more oil, roughly about a tablespoon or 15 milliliters, and then drop in those potatoes. The burner is over medium to high heat. Saute these guys until they have a touch of color. And if at any time you need to add more oil, drop it in. After a few minutes, round up those potatoes, put them to the side. We'll take care of them a little bit later. Add more oil to the pan, roughly about a tablespoon. It's time to sear that chuck roast. Drop it on in and sear all sides. Once you have a good sear, it's time to throw those onions and those potatoes right back in. So you're almost done with this. Now we're gonna add one last thing before we pop this guy into the oven. One and a half cups or 375 milliliters of beef broth. Place that chuck roast onto the potatoes and onions. And remember that brown on the bottom of the pan? Grab a flat bottom spatula, scrape a little bit up. We have that broth, use it to incorporate it into that cooking liquid. The burner, it's still over medium to high heat. Bring that cooking liquid to a simmer. Once it starts simmering, throw that lid on, let it simmer for about another minute, and then pop it into the oven. I'm gonna cook it at 275 Fahrenheit, 135 Celsius for three hours for this three pound or 1.3 kilo roast. And after it's done, take it out. And what do we have? Ho, 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 check that out. Now we're getting to the point where we can knock out this sauce. Take the roast out, the potatoes and the onions, put them to the side, cover them, keep them in a warm place, let them rest. And as you're slowly removing all of these bits and pieces out of the pan, you can gaze, feast your eyes upon what's in the bottom of that pan, that rich, dark brown cooking stock. Now that is flavor. And again, you don't have to use this cooking liquid, but you'd be crazy not to. So after you have that roast tucked away and you've kept yourself from drinking that cooking liquid, grab that flat bottom spatula again and scrape the bottom of the pan, releasing all of that goodness up. Try to get every little bit and piece up and add it into that cooking liquid. This just brings so much flavor to the sauce. Pour the cooking stock into a measuring cup, check it out, see how much you have. We need about one and a half cups or 375 milliliters. If you don't have that, you can substitute with store-bought broth or stock, whether it's chicken stock, beef stock, worst case scenario, you can add water. So now you're gonna knock out a little prep work for the African sauce. You could always do this while the roast is cooking in the oven. Take one fancy shallot, cut it in half, remove that pesky skin, and finely mince it. So that takes care of all of the prep work. Now you're ready to throw that sauce together. Crank up your burner to medium to high heat. Add one tablespoon of 14 grams of unsalted butter. But there it is, I think I can hear it, the ambulance. 
So what are you doing, man? How come you're not using that same pot that you cooked that chuck roast in? It has flavor. Oh, yes, it does, and you're absolutely right. If you're at home, use the same pot or pan that you cooked that roast, or if you sauteed a steak, it'll add a lot of flavor. But for video purposes, it's easier for me to show it to you in this low-sided saute pan. Great, now that we got that out of the way, saute those shallots over medium heat until tender. And now it's time to grab a little Madeira wine. And the best place to find this is typically a liquor store. You want a drinking quality type Madeira wine. You don't want that stuff that you can get at the grocery store that's a cooking grade. Add a quarter of a cup or 63 milliliters to the pan. Reduce this until there's just a little bit left. So check it out, you wanna reduce it pretty much about this much. Now it's time to add two tablespoons of tomato puree, that's about 30 grams. Quickly mix in that puree over medium heat and drop in a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Give it a quick mix and let this simmer for about 30 seconds to one minute. All right, so here we go, the moment that you've all been waiting for, we're gonna dump in that one and a half cups, 375 milliliters of that cooking stock. And you're probably wondering, did you put the grease in too? Oh, oh, oh yes, I did. But if you don't wanna use the grease, you can always use a fat separator and remove it. For this, you're gonna bring the sauce to a boil over medium heat. Once it starts to boil, turn the heat down to low and simmer for about five to eight minutes or until it's reduced by half at least, or until it becomes thick. I reduce this by about two thirds and check it out. It's a rich, dark, full flavored brown sauce. Doesn't get much better than this, but hold on to your hats, we're not done yet. For a nice, clean, silky smooth sauce, it's best to strain out the sauce into a gravy boat or a container. Now, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. Taste your choice. If you like it chunky, why not go for it? Still tastes great. So here you go, check it out. I have half of a cup or 125 milliliters of pure delight. Well, thanks Sauce and Gravy Nation for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this recipe on how to make an African sauce. If you liked this recipe and found it helpful, smash that like button. And remember to keep whisking, y'all.